So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto has Madara's eyes. Part 2. If you guys enjoy this, what if? And you want to see part 3. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 4. Rebellion, War, and Truth PT2. Naruto Namakas. Kami no Sharingan. Hey people it's N09 back with another chapter for Naruto Namakas. Kami no Sharingan. I am very impressed with the reviews I gained and don't worry I am just getting started on the action. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto, but I do own the characters and weapons I created. Chapter 4. Rebellion, War, and Truth PT. 2. Naruto, Shinku, and Mei were walking through the forest of Kumo, heading for the Namakas estate until Naruto stopped in his tracks and smirks. Hey Shinku-chan, you and Mei sent head back to the compound. I remembered I needed to do something important. He says and before Shinku could say anything, Naruto shunts in away and she lets out a frustrating sigh. Baka. Come on Mei-san. She says but Mei blinks and looks at the repeat. Where is he going? She asks as she follows Shinku. You don't want to know. She mumbles as they head for the Namika's compound. In the forest, Yujito was perched up on a tree branch, waiting for a chance to pounce on Naruto, when he suddenly sunshine away and to her shock, couldn't detect him. Naruto suddenly appears behind her and pinches her ass cheeks. Yujito keeps and jumps up on her feet blushing. She growls and turns her right hand into a fist and turns around, ready to knock Naruto lights out. Naruto you damn pervert I'm gonna she started to say, but then stops and sees no one there. What the? I could have sworn he was. She started to say until she felt a pair of arms wrap around her waist and looked down to see they belonged to Naruto. Hey, Kitty-chan. He says and releases her from his grip. How do you keep doing that? She mumbles and crosses her arms over her chest. I'm just that good. He says with a grin on his face making her huff. You're so lucky you're cute dammit. Naruto shrugs and pulls her into a hug and kisses her lightly on the lips. You're lucky you're so damn sexy Yugi-chan. He says, making her grin and revealing a pair of canines. Love you to Foxy. So are you gonna head home or keep holding me like this? She asks only to receive a kiss in return. You were gonna try to pounce me weren't you? He asked the vessel for the Nibi. I was but you ruined it. She said with a pout on her face making him chuckle. No need to pout Yugi Haim. How about I take you out for sushi after you meet Mei-san? Yujito nods with a grin on her face but then speaks up. Who's Mei? She asks. A we found unconscious near the shores of Kumo during border patrol. She's staying with us until further notice why. He asks. No reason. What is it with you and older women? She mumbles. Hey you're only three years older than me and so is Samui chan He states as he lets her go. What about Anko and Yuigao? She asks. Anko's not that bad. Okay maybe she is since she's been trying to jump me and make me her plaything since I was 13. Yuigao-chan is normally quiet and I can be around her and not fear for my virginity. He answered while she giggled. Did Anko have her way with you yet? Naruto's response was a blush. She almost did and if it wasn't for Rin Ni-chan, I would have been scarred for life. He said with a shudder causing Yujito to laugh at him. Oh you poor thing. Must have been a traumatic experience for you. She cooed out and gave him a hug. And now I have to head back home and fear for my innocence again. He mumbled with a fake pout on his face and looked up at Yujito using the puppy's eyes. You'll protect me from her won't you Yugi Haim? Naruto asks. Yujito's grin became wider and pinched his cheeks. You are so cute when you pout. You look like a sad puppy. She cooed out but then beeps when he pinches her ass again, releasing Naruto. Said blonde grin and runs away with an angry and red Yujito chasing after him. Come back here and face me like a ninja you damn pervert. She yelled at the running and laughing blonde. Meanwhile. Shinku and Mei made it to the Namika's estate and said Kiri Kanoichi was impressed by the sight. Wow. This is a nice compound. She stated. Thanks. The Rakage gave it to us as a welcome gift, even though we aren't ninjas for his village. She says as they approached the door and were about to open it until Naruto appeared in front of them grinning while an angry and red Yujito leaped out of nowhere with her clawed gauntlet drawn. I'm here you pervert so I can use you as a scratching post. She said and slowly approached them. Shinku tried to dissolve the situation by stepping in between them. Well now I know Naruto should pay for whatever he did to you, but let's not forget you started it and Iniki stop being a pervert or I'll tell Kasan. She said to Naruto who was performing the raspberry, but then stopped and paled when she said she'd tell their mother, but then glared at her. Tell and I'll tell her who's been going downstairs at night and stealing her private dango stash, and we both know it's not Anko since she knows better. He says making her pale. Fine. Jerk. 
She mumbles while Yujito puts her weapons away while Naruto walks towards the door, but then pauses and rolls his eyes. Hey you guys might want to step away from the door. He warned. Shinku and Yujito move to the side leaving a confused Mei, but Shinku pulls her to the side and says just watch. Naruto rolls his eyes and opens the door, and that was when a blur tackles him to the ground, and they roll away for a while, and then stop to see Anko grinning and sitting on top of Naruto. Hey Yanadam Chibi, did you miss me? I missed you. She says getting an irked look from Naruto who smirks and puffs away. Anko blinks in confusion only to see the real Naruto between Shinku and Yujito, with an arm wrapped around their shoulders. Anko pouts and folds her arms. Damn it. I was so close to getting my hands on you. She mumbles and looks at the ground. Naruto chuckles and removes his arms from their shoulders. He then appears behind Anko and leans into her ear and whispers a few things, making her eyes widen and a blush appear in her face. Naruto motions for the others to go on and while he talks to Anko. Shinku leads them into the house and that was when Naruto wrapped his arms around her. You know Anko I'm flattered that you would be interested in me despite the age difference. So what set up this form of attraction you have towards me? He asks while she blushes a little and fidgets. Um well. You see. It kinda just happened to be honest. I've seen how you treat that Yujito girl, Yuga-chan and those other three and. She explained. I see. But we have fun too, you know. I mean you're a great prankster and I love teasing you and you are. Hot in your own way even though you tried to make me into a man that day you were drunk. He says while she chuckles slightly from the remark. I remember. Your mom was ready to kill me that day. At least she didn't make you go through four hours of kinjutsu training with her. He mumbled as he released her and helped her up. Ha ah, sorry. She started to say but then winced and grabbed her left shoulder. Naruto frowned and had her kneel down and pulled part of her trench coat and arm away and saw the three Tama marks on her and saw it pulsing. W wait Naruto don't look at she started to say, but he cut her off. The curse seal. Hiro Senen showed me a picture of it once. Has it been getting worse? He asks and she nods and hisses in pain. Damn painkillers don't even work anymore. She mumbles and looks away. Naruto places his hand on the seal and channels some of Yubi's chakra into it and makes it stop pulsing. Anko's eyes widen when she doesn't feel any more pain and looks at Naruto who slowly pulls his hand away. H how did you? She started to ask until he smirks. I use this. Naruto holds his hand out and reveals a paper with different seals on it. It's a compression seal Lero Senen taught me and said it can be used to seal up foreign chakra. That should help for now. He says and once again helps her up. That in Jubi's chakra is keeping it in check. He thought while Anko glumps him and gives him a kiss on the cheek. Thanks, Naruto-kun. I'll have to thank you later on today. She says with a mischievous grin on her face. Naruto smirks and gets out of her hug. I think you want to do more than thank me Anko-chan and remember I can't do anything serious. Yet. He says and makes her shiver when he rubs her rear with his hand and gives it a good squeeze. Come on. Let's go in. He says while she follows him into the compound. As they enter, Naruto saw his mother talking to Mei, Yugao, Yujito, and Shinku on the couch in the living room, and Kakashi was leaning against the wall, eyes smiling at Naruto. What? Naruto asks his surrogate brother who was grinning under his mask. You have no clue how proud I am of you Naruto. Bringing home older women. Sniffle they grow up so fast. He says, wiping a fake tear away from his eye. His response got him a slap upside the head by Rin. Shut it you or you're gonna get reacquainted with the couch again. She growled out while Kakashi sweats a little. Haha. <laughs> well I think I'll go and see if we need anything for the compound. And Naruto remember the talk we had and be sure to use protection. He says sunshine away with a red face Naruto yelling shut up. That damn pervert, it was fine until you brought another female home with you. She says while he slumps his shoulders. Oh for Kami sake Kas and I had no idea me and Shinku would find her barely alive near the shoreline. Plus I couldn't leave her out there. He started while she looked at him for a while and sighs. If Hiro Senen was here he'd be having a field day with all the females in the house. She mumbled, getting a nod from her son. Do true, Kakashi Nai San is bad enough, but at least he has some control over his perverted side, thanks to Ren Nichan. He said with a small grin on her face while she blushed lightly and glared at her little brother. So Yugi Chan, where's our sensei? Did he do something to piss the old man off again? He asked for the Nibi container, and she shrugged. Knowing him he probably did. So Mei San Kiri is still in the middle of a war right? Yujito asks the dual bloodline wielder who nods. I'm afraid so. I'm on the rebel side, but we're slowly losing the fight. Yande Mizukage is a member of the Sanbi no Onikam. She finished getting wide eyes from everyone except Naruto and Shinku since they knew already. The bloodline purge just happened out of nowhere. 
he believes that bloodlines are the reason why we always have war and wanted to purify not just water country but the other elementals as well. He's even having the shinobi kill even children. She said as the images of dead children entered her mind. Everyone's eyes widened at what she said and couldn't believe a cage would do something like that. So the only thing I could think of is to ask the rakage for assistance, but I'm afraid that it would start another great shinobi war. We had another container for the Rakubi no Namakuji, but he disappeared after the civil war started. She finished. After being silent for a few seconds Kashina spoke up. I see. Well I would definitely help you and so would my friends and children. My son is actually the holder of the Kaiubi no Kitsune, and we have Sharingan no Kakashi, two of my students who are very strong, and my late husband's other student whose medical skills are on par with Tsunade's. She said getting a wide-eyed look from Mai. That was when Yujito spoke up. I'm the container for the Nibi no Nekamata, and the Reikage's younger brother is the container for the Hachibi no Kaianyu. We are the guardians of Kaminari no Kuni. She said. You two along with the Reikage's brother are Jinkiriki. She asks and gets a nod from Naruto and Yujito. We can each control the power of R and Naruto kun here is the youngest of us. Yujito said. I see. If you all could help me save our village and country I'd be forever in your debt. She said. No problem. Rin would you be so kind and show me to one of the guest rooms. I'm sure she would love to take a shower and change into some comfortable clothes. Kishina asks the med Kanoichi who nodded and got up. Follow me Mei-san. She says and Mei gets up and follows her upstairs. After that Yujito appeared beside Naruto with her arms wrapped around him and grins. So are we gonna go out for sushi or do I need to tell your mom that you pinched my ass earlier? Whoops I just did. She says grinning while Naruto glares at her, but pales and slowly turns his head to see a dark aura surrounding his mother. He started to sweat bullets and before Kashina could do anything, Naruto grabbed Yujito's shoulder and sunshine out of the house. Shinku and Yuga laugh lightly while Anko grins. You're not gonna kill your only son are you sensei? Anko asks her teacher who lets out a frustrated sigh. No, but I can beat the crap out of him later. I never should have let Kakashi give Naruto the talk. She mutters and lays back on the couch. You really need to relax and say and find yourself a boyfriend soon or you're gonna go nuts from the lack of sexual activity. Anko says, causing Kashina to fall onto the floor while Yuga sweat dropped. Shinku however fell to the floor laughing her ass off and Kashina shot up from the ground and glared at her student hard. For that comment Anko you can't have Dango for two weeks. She said and smirked when Anko paused and paled. No. Anko's cry echoed throughout Kumo causing many people to stop and wonder who was suffering right now. Anko was currently in a corner curled up into a ball crying her eyes out while Shinku giggled. You should learn to keep your mouth shut Anko. Well I'm gonna go change Kasan. Shinku then heads upstairs while Yuga was patting a sobbing Anko on the back. Later on that night. Everyone in the compound was sound asleep in their rooms, but outside the compound, eight shadows were zipping through the roof of the building, and they wore blank masks with the kanji no on it. Danzo-sama's orders are to capture the girl and kill the Kaiubi boy. Stay quiet and alert because there are four A's and one S rank shinobi in the compound. One root Anbu ordered while the other three nodded. They opened a sunroof and quietly leaped into the hallway and separated into two groups. Meanwhile Naruto was in his room sound asleep until his eyes snapped open, revealing the Sharingan which glowed in the moonlight. Theme 1 found a door on the right and slowly opened it, revealing a room and a person sleeping in the bed. The two root members slowly crept up and drew their tantos when they saw that it was one of their targets. The leader raised his tanto and instantly pulled the cover off, but the body faded away and in its place was a seal that glowed white. Before the root members could react, a surge of electricity coursed through their bodies, making them scream out in pain and collapse, while their bodies twitched and jerked. Naruto appeared wearing only a pair of black cargo pants, while his Sharingan glowing in the dark. He then summoned two clones and had them tie the two drones up. That was when an explosion occurred and the house rocked making his eyes widen. What the hell? Aw oh shit Shinku. Naruto said and suddenly warps away. Outside the building. An explosion occurred in the eastern side of the compound, and smoke rose from it. A red blur leaped out of the smoke and into the forest, with four black blurs coming after her. Shinku was leaping through the treetops clutching her bleeding arm. She suddenly stopped on a tree limb and flipped off of it when a barrage of kunai went right after her, and she landed on the ground and sped away into the forest. Two more root anbu leaped out of the trees and went after her. Who the heck are those guys and why did they attack me? She thought as she increased her speed. As she sped past a tree her eyes widened when she saw an exploding tag glow. Shit. She performed a few hand seals and slammed her hands on the ground and a wall of earth appeared in front of her. Another explosion occurred, but the power behind it was so powerful that it reduced the wall into rubble and sent Shinku flying backwards. She suddenly hit the ground and tumbled backwards a couple of times. 
She leapt back on her feet and made her way towards the lake. She leaped on top of it and performed a few hand seals. Sujin Heki. She cried out and a wall of water surrounded her, while drills made of water shot out around her wall of water. When the technique ended, the water wall dropped, but it revealed no one. Two root Anbu appeared on top of the lake and looked around. Where did she go? One root asks as they look around. She couldn't have escaped. We would have sensed her chakra by now. The second one answered. At the edge of the lake a green frog pops out of the water and slowly swims to the shoreline. It crawls out of the lake and hops away into the forest, while the root Anbu look for Shinku. After leaping away from the area for a while it stops and slowly opens its mouth. A hand shoots out and after that a whole arm, head full of red hair, and a body comes out of the toad's mouth. Shinku was kneeling down panting, and the toad disappeared in a puff of smoke. It's only a matter of time before they find me. I better head back to the... Shinku. A voice behind her said. By reflex she pulled out a kunai and swung it towards the shadowy figure, but he stopped her wrist. She tried to kick him in the side only for him to grab her leg and pin her to the ground while she struggled. The Mauto chill it's me. Naruto said, revealing his face to her. Hey Nikki. What the heck is going on and who are those? She started to say until he covered her mouth and did a shushing motion with his finger. Quiet. Those masked ninja are still searching for you. He said getting off her and motioning his hand to follow her. That was until a kunai passed by him and was embedded into a tree. Naruto and Shinku look up to see two root Anbu descend towards them from the trees with their blades drawn. Naruto curses due to the fact that he left his kunai at the compound, as does Shinku. They leapt backwards when the drones landed in their previous location and then charged towards the siblings. As they approached the Namika's twins, they swung their blades at their heads. Naruto ducks and grabs the root Anbu's wrist. He twists it hard, hearing a snapping sound come from the drone's wrist, and before the nin could scream, Naruto positioned the tanto and thrust it into his heart, killing him instantly. Naruto tosses the dead body to the side and sees Shinku unleash a barrage of punches on the other root ninja. She then kicks the ninja hard in his masked face, breaking it and sending the drone flying into a tree and knocking him out. Naruto's eyes widen and yell. Shinku duck. Said girl duck while a tanto hits nothing but air. Naruto appears in front of the shocked root ninja, with a swirling blue ball of chakra in his hand. Rasengan. Naruto yelled as he slams his father's technique into the nin's gut and sends him flying through three trees and a boulder, killing the root ninja, while Shinku gets back up on her feet. That was when they heard the sound of a thousand birds chirping and a blood-curdling scream. Kakashi appears with his right hand coated in blood. Kakashi Nai-san. Shinku says as she runs over to the man. Are you two okay? Kakashi asks while Naruto appears next to his sister. We're fine. What about Kasan and the others? They didn't get caught in the explosion did they? Naruto asks. No, they didn't. But we dealt with the others. Kakashi says as he walks over to the dead body of a root Anbu and pulls the mask off. His normal eye narrows when he sees the kanji for one on it. So Danzo is behind this. I should have known. Kakashi mumbled as he tossed the mask away. Isn't he the cripple that mom that wanted to have me and Naruto Nai turned into a breeding factory? Shinku asks, but doesn't see her brother Sharingan flash in the dark, but fades afterwards. Bakashi nods while flicking the blood off his arm. Sadly yes. He, the two elders as well as the civilians, wanted to turn you both into their personal playthings, but our mother retaliated and killed several members, as well as sent Danzo to the hospital. The rest you already know. He said while Shinku treated her arm. I think our two cents sacrificed his life for those ungrateful bastards. She said while Naruto nodded. Yeah but at least we'll be able to carry on his legacy even if we aren't a part of that village. I'm sure he'd be proud of us Shinku-chan. Naruto said. Kakashi's eyes smiled and nodded in agreement. Well let's clean up this mess and head back to the compound. Kakashi said and they used water to get rid of the bodies and afterwards, head back. Back at the compound Kashina, Rin, Anko, Yugao and Mei were outside the partly destroyed living quarters. Yugao and Mei were putting out the fire with some, while Rin was treating a few burn injuries Anko had. Kashina on the other hand had a barely conscious Rutanin by the collar, and she was beyond pissed. She already killed two of the Rutanin that tried to escape, but she kept one alive, in order to get some info from him. Listen here you bastard. You better tell why you attacked us, and why my children are missing right now before I send you back to your master in pieces. She yelled, shaking the drone violently. He won't talk Kasan. Naruto said. Kashina dropped the man and saw her children along with Kakashi walking towards them. In a flash of red she had the two children she brought into the world in a hug. Naruto. Shinku. Oh thank Kami you two are okay. She said in relief while they returned the hug. We're fine Kasan. Naruto assured his mother who released them and noticed Shinku's arm was bandaged up a little. Your arm. Kashina said worriedly while the younger Riti looked at it. 
I got hit by some of the debris Kasan, that's all. She replied while Naruto walked over to the root ninja's barely conscious form and slammed his foot into the man's face, knocking him out. He then drags the na-operative towards his mother and sets him down, rips the mask off and pries his mouth open. Kishina and Hikari are confused by this until Naruto pulls the tongue out slightly. Like I said earlier Koss and you won't get any info from these guys. These Juin marks keep them from talking about Danzo or his operations. If they do then the mark instantly activates and their body freezes up instantly. Naruto explained while their eyes widened. Sachi, how do you know so much about seals? I mean I know Jiraiya taught you and Shinku the aspects of Fuinjutsu and how to use them properly, but I honestly didn't think you'd get this far. She asked. Naruto, on the other hand, smiled. Dad's intellect rubbed off on me. He answered, but that was when Ian a squad of his Anbu appeared. Kishina what the hell happened here? I could practically see the smoke coming from your home from the tower. He asked demanded while the Anbu and Kakashi went to help Yugao and Mei in putting out the fire. Kishina brushed her hair back and spoke up. We were attacked by some ninja from Konoha. She answered, which made the man's eyes widen in shock. But they're not any of Siratobi's men. They belong to a man named Danzo. He had a confused look on his face until Naruto spoke up. He's the team I told you about that forced us to leave. Naruto answered. I see. Are any of his men alive? He asks. Naruto lifted an unconscious written in, in front of E. This one is Sensei, but he has a seal that keeps him from talking about his master, so you'll need to contact Hirokai Ofu and have him take a look at it. Naruto stated while the man nodded and snapped his fingers, making two Anbu appear at attention. You two take this man to the Anbu holding cells until Jiraiya Sama returns and have him searched for any form of weapon, as well as suicidal pills. He ordered. The masked nin nodded, grabbed the root nin, and vanished. How are the others Kasan? Naruto asks his mother. Anko chan Yuga-chan, Mei-chan, and Rin-chan are all fine Sachi, though we're gonna have to stay in an apartment complex until the compound is fixed. She said and looked at E. Breakage sama I'm sorry that this incident occurred. She said bowing, but he blinks in confusion and waves it off. There is no need for you to apologize to Kishina-chan. Kanoha in a sense is responsible for this incident, and I assure you that I will be getting an explanation from the old monkey about this. He seriously needs to put his subordinates on a tighter leash. He growled out and afterwards sunshine away as did the remaining Anbu. Kishina sighs and brushes her hair back. Why can't those bastards just leave us alone? She mumbled and Naruto frowned when he heard this and swore that he would kill Danzo and his lackeys. He was not gonna let that man destroy his family. Just wait for Danzo theme. The next time we meet I will shove a Rikiri into your chest and rip your vile heart out. He said clenching his fists in anger. Chapter 5. Rebellion, War, and Truth PT. 3. Breakage Tower. Oh come on big bro. Why can't I go help assist in the Wario? Karabi whined while E's brow which dangerously. For the last time you were already on a mission when I picked the ninja that'll help Mei send side in the bloodline purge and Yujito's already going with them. Two Jinchuriki are more than enough to deal with the Mizukage and the Sanbi since their other Jinchuriki has left Kiri's forces. He said in a calm but angry tone. But what about my student Samui, Kari, and Amoy? Karabi asked. They will be fine damn it. You must stay to guard the borders of our country and that's final. He said with a tick mark on his face and was five seconds away from sending Karabi into a mountain. That was when Naruto appeared in the tower and sweat dropped when he saw E ready to beat the crap out of his younger brother. Um, do I need to come back later? The blonde asked why Lee let out a sigh. No Naruto stay. So is the group prepared to head into water country territory? He asked and got a nod from the blonde. Good and so that you know you all will be posing as mercenaries that may hired to help assist in the war, since the last thing we need is another international incident and tampering with a neutral country's affairs. Do you all have a plan on how to deal with man's forces? He asked Naruto who nodded. Thanks to all the knowledge he gained from Madara after he absorbed him from his timeline, Naruto knew all of Kiri's strongholds, security shifts, locations of their backup supplies, and their weak spots. What about the daimyos? Naruto asked. They already know that we're making this attempt and are already planning to start a treaty with us once the rebellion side succeeds. Remember to stay alert out there Naruto because the ninja there are masters in stealth and assassination. He said, getting a nod from the blonde. And so am I. He thought. So right now our best bet would be to leave early tomorrow since their boat patrols are more alert at night than in the daytime. Naruto started getting a nod from E while Karabi sulked in a corner. So what about the issue we had with Konoha? Naruto asked and the man sighs in frustration. 
I hate to tell you this Naruto, but unfortunately Danzo cannot be touched due to all the political influence he has on most of the governing system in Kanahagakur, and despite our attempts to get any info out the root Anbu, even with the curse mark removed, he reluctantly died from the interrogation and torture he went through. He said. Those words caused Naruto's eyes to flash red for a few seconds, and he clenched his fists in anger. You mean to tell me that that fucking cripple is gonna get away with sending his drones after my family and live to see another day? He asked in a dangerous tone, getting a reluctant nod from the man. Yes but I sent a message to the Sandame and gave him a warning that Kanoha Nin were not allowed to enter Kumo territory until further notice, and if any ninja from Kanoha were seen anywhere in our country, they'd be killed on the spot, and I also doubled our patrol squads around the borders. He stated. I see but how does that keep Danzo theme in check? Naruto asked me who grinned. The simply put it Kanoha would end up going to war with us, and it would be a war they cannot win, because not only are they still recovering their forces from the Kaiubi's attack, but Kumo happens to have three on their side while they have none. All in all you, Yujito, and Karabi will have little to no problem raising that place to the ground. He answered. That may be true, but Danzo's not someone who should be taken lightly. He was one of the few who competed with Hiruzen Suritobi for the Hokage title, and the man is an opportunist and manipulator. He'll do whatever it takes to get what he wants no matter what the consequences. Naruto explained. I'll take your word on that. Well good luck kid and please make sure those four get back in one piece or Karabi will level half of Kumo to the ground. He stated since Yujito, Kari, Amoi, and Samui were like family to Karabi, and to harm them in any way, shape, or form would spell death for the person responsible, and a pissed of Karabi was a dangerous Karabi, since the man was the strongest shinobi in the village next to Ian Kishina. I will and I'll make sure Kari Chan doesn't kill that laid back Baka Amoy during the mission. He said jokingly while he chuckled, knowing good and well how those two are always at it, and Samui and Yujito would have to be the ones to break it up. Yes, please do. He said while Naruto gives him a mock salute and disappears in a swirl of wind. The next day. Kumo shipping ports. It was midnight near the shipping docks of one of Kumo's ports, and standing near a large cargo ship were Kashina, Naruto, Shinku, Kakashi, Rin, Mei, Anko, and Yugao, along with the Kumo ninja that were gonna aid them who happened to be Yujito, Kari, Samui, Amoi, and a squad of Anbu that were picked personally by E. Naruto was currently inspecting his gear as were the others. Amoi was currently sighing while sucking on a lollipop and pondering on what would happen if this S-ranked mission would fail. Naruto saw the faraway look on mom's face and chuckled while making his way towards him. Amoy just kept pondering on the consequences if they were to fail to aid the rebel faction and get caught until he felt a hand on his shoulder. He turned his head to see a smirking Naruto. You know Amoy pondering on the negative outcomes isn't healthy. He stated and the young sword user shrugged. I know but hey this is my first time going into the unknown territory of a neutral nation and you never know what could happen there. He stated. Kari sighed in frustration and bopped Amoy on the head. Listen to what Naruto-kun is saying, Amoy. You take things way too seriously. Lighten up for a change. Besides, I can't wait to start kicking ass and taking names. She said as she flexed her arm and grinned. Said sword user looks at her with a bored expression and shrugs once again. Whatever. He said nonchalantly which made her stumble over, but she caught her footing and growled at her teammate. She slowly raised her fist and swung it at an unaware Amoy until Naruto appeared in between them and caught her fist in his palm. You can pummel the laid-back idiot after our mission carry Chan. Naruto said, eyes smiling at the girl who was now blushing and pulled her hand away from him and folded her arms across her chest. Fine. She muttered while he chuckled. Hey, Naruto-kun. Hitomi spoke up. Yeah Hitomi-chan. He asked. How are you gonna handle the Yande Mizukage and the Sanbi? I'm pretty sure you and Yujito alone would be capable of handling them both, but. Do you have a way to beat him without killing him and releasing the overgrown turtle? She asked while Naruto pondered on this and spoke up. Actually I do. From the knowledge I gained from Madara, he placed a powerful Onyagura and controlled his actions throughout Kiri and having him start the bloodline genocide war. He said with a frown on his face. To be able to control a who has full control over their under Sharingan influence is amazing yet terrifying. Madara indeed was a man to be feared. Now I can see why my dad had a tough time facing him in my timeline. Indeed, since you not only absorbed and gained Madara's and Sasuke's as well as the Juubi's knowledge, powers, eyes, and jutsus, facing the one in this dimension should be a cinch for you, since you know what he's planning to do. She stated. Maybe but it's possible that Madara would be different from the one I fought and will more than likely try to use this to gain his original strength back, but I can't worry about the Akatsuki yet. My primary concern is this war as well as Orochimaru and Danzo. He said to the vixen who nodded in his mindscape. That was when he felt a hand on his shoulder and looked up to see Kakashi. 
are you nervous about Naruto? This is yours and Shinku's first time entering unknown territory and fighting in a war, and this is different from doing a mission since anything could happen. He asked a blonde with a concerned look on his masked face. The little Aniki but I'll manage. He assured the copy nin who nodded his head. Okay but stay focused because in a few hours we'll be entering a war zone. He started and left to get all of his gear ready, but a thought ran in his mind. That's really weird. Naruto doesn't seem so worried like Shinku was and the look in his eyes. Those were the eyes of a shinobi who has fought in countless battles and has taken many lives, but that can't be right. I mean sure Naruto has been on missions when he's had to kill, but. Maybe I'm just seeing things. A while later they all boarded the cargo ship and it set sail towards Kiri. Inside the cargo hold. Naruto was currently sitting on a crate, sharpening his ninjato with a smooth stone, and that was when Yujito walked around the corner and sat next to him. They remained silent for a few minutes until the blonde spoke up. You know Karabi raised a huge stink over not being able to join in the war right? He asked while she chuckled and shook her head. Yeah that sounds like something our overgrown bull-headed sensei would do especially with Amoy, Kerry, and Samui with us. He's very overprotective of them. So are you ready to participate in your first war? She asked the blonde who nodded and sheathed his blade, and that was when she wrapped her arms around him and held him close to her body. Thus promise me you and Shinku-chan will be careful out there so that we can come back home in one piece. Naruto signs and wraps an arm around her waist. I will Yujito-chan, plus if I end up dying you can just have Nibi bring me back to life and beat the stupidity out of me. He said jokingly which made her chuckle at the thought. All kidding aside I will be careful I promise. He said and kissed her on the cheek. Yeah just like the one where you promised me you wouldn't try to cut through that minefield when that dog got away from you. She replied. Hey, that was the lightning lady's purebred poodle, and if I remember it was your fault I had to go into that minefield since she bit you on the ass because you smelled like cats. He said which made her fume. Whatever you blonde jerk. She said and got off the crate and grabbed Naruto's hand. Come on, we're an hour away from the hidden dock May was talking about. She said as she led them out of the cargo hold. Secret docking port. As the ship entered and docked next to the port the group made their way out of the cargo ship and May led them to the secret route that would take them to the rebel camp. As they walked through the path a small group of Kiri Ninja appeared and blocked their path. That was when one of them walked forward. Hold it. Are you allies or enemies? The May last. He was 6'1 and was wearing the Kiri Janin outfit. He had black spiky hair, reddish brown eyes, and the lower part of his face was covered in black bandages. Strapped to his back was a large broadsword. From tip to handle, it is approximately 5 to 6 feet long, with a single-edged enormous blade approximately 1 foot wide. It sported a bolted steel base and blade, and there are two holes on the blade near the hilt. The base is reckoned to having a swirling or winged motif at its base, tinted gold, and the blade is now black, with engraved marks at its base. All in all, the blade was wicked looking. Naruto on the other hand raised an eyebrow when he saw the man. Whoa this guy looks just like Zabuza. Wonder if they're related in any way. He thought. Mei made her way through the group and stepped forward. Hello Shinjin Mamachi. Mei said with a smile on her face while Shinjin's eyes widened in shock. Em Mei. You're alive. But how? I heard from the group that retreated that you were claimed by the sea after the failed attempt to attack the Mizukage and his naval force. He asked the lava user whose smile grew. I would have had it not been for the children of the late Yandame Hokage. She stated and motioned for the two siblings to step forward, and Shinjin's eyes widened when he saw two teenage versions of the Yellow Flash and Red Death. They found me barely alive near the shores of Kumo and have helped me fully recover. She explained, and that was when Kishina stepped forward which made Shinji's eyes bug out as did the other Kiri Ninja. I it's Kishina Yuzumaki the Red Death. One of the Kiri Nin stated as he pointed at her. Kishina on the other hand rubbed the back of her head in embarrassment. Yes I am the Red Death and these two are my children and we, along with my students, my late husband's students, and the group of Kumo Nin, are here to assist you and the rebels in ending this war. Kishina started making the Kirin and Gawk and started to whisper to each other. Can you believe it? We've got the Red Death on our side and get to see her in action. One Malanin said. I know. She was the only ninja who could go toe to toe with the yellow flash and wait, she had kids with the man who wiped out Iwa's shinobi army in the blink of an eye. A female Kirinin said. Yeah the blonde looks just like the Yandame Hokage. I wonder if he knows the Horatian and Rasengan his father created. Another nin asked. Kishina sweat dropped when she heard all of this in sighs. Great, I've got a fan club here just like in Kumo. She muttered while the Kumo nin sweat dropped and the former leaf nin snicker. Naruto on the other hand was focusing on Shinjin who raised an eyebrow. What? He asked the blonde who blinked a few times. By any chance are you related to Zabuza Mamachi? Naruto asked, and the man's eyes widened, but then returned to normal. 
Yeah, I'm related to that idiot. He's my younger brother, why? He asked the blonde. Well, you both look the same in a sense. He answered while the man chuckled. Yeah, we get that a lot since I'm known as the devil of the mist, well, he's known as the demon of the mist. The only difference is that I'm stronger than him. The Baka should have listened to me when I told him not to make an attempt to kill the Yande Mizuka jet, but the damn brat was stubborn as hell. If I ever find him I'm gonna break every damn bone in his body. Shinjin started with an evil gleam in his eye which made Naruto sweat drop. Yeah you're related to him alright. Well it's an honor to be fighting alongside you. He said as he offered his hand which the man looked at for a while and at Naruto, but then nodded and shook the blonde's hand. Likewise, I look forward to seeing the son of the yellow flash fight as well. Shinjin stated. After being introduced to the other Kirinin and the Kumonin that were assisting them, Shinjin and the Kirinin led them to the rebel camp. Rebel camp. As the group approached the camp, they noticed that in the camp were a lot of Kirinin that were ranked as Chunin, Jonin, Anbu, and some were wearing hunter masks, meaning they were Oinin. There were plenty of tents that range from small to large, and the large ones apparently were meant for holding supplies, as well as the refugees that were against the war. There also appeared to be those with bloodlines in the group and some that Naruto recognized like a few members of the Kagaya clan, Hayo clan, Kitsuiki, Blood clan, This is Ranmaru's clan, and a few others. Most of the clan members consisted of young adults who were tending to the children. That was when Shinjin stopped and looked at the group. Well May since you're back let's head to the main tent and inform the temporary leader that you're back. The rest of you can join up or if you want look around but don't wander too far. The Zanbato user said and left with Mei following, and that was when Kashina spoke up. The Kashi, Anko, Yugao, Rin, and Yukumo Anbu are coming with me to meet the leaders of this rebellion. Naruto, Shinku, Yujito, Karui, Samui, and Amoy can look around. She said getting a nod from the group while the adults left. So. What should we do now that we're here? Shinku asked the group, and that was when Amoy spoke up. I don't know about you, but I'm just gonna sit under a tree and take a nap. Amoy said as he left with his hands in his pockets getting a sweat drop from them all. Daisy Baka. Kerry mumbled but then appeared beside Naruto and wrapped her arms around his arm. Come on Naruto kun you and I can look around and spend some time alone. She emphasized alone and had a grin on her face and dragged him off to God knows where well said blonde blinked a few times and shrugs and walks alongside her, leaving Yujito and Samui glaring hard at Kerry's back. Said dark skinned female turned her head around and did a victory sign with her hand and grinned cheekily at the two blondes had tick marks on their heads. That bitch. Where does she get off stealing your future mate? Nibi hissed in her mindscape. Yeah, where does she get stealing my weight? What? Nibi, he's not my mate. She yelled at the cat demon with a red face. Oh, please, kitten, don't even try to pull that. You two are practically inseparable. You better claim his manhood first before those other girls do. She stated, which made Yujito blush and sputter. Be but. But she stammered until Shinku slung her arms around Yujito and Samui's shoulders. Come on now you two, let's check out the place. She said while the two sigh and follow her. Main tent. Inside the tent were the leaders of the different divisions of the rebellion and were currently discussing a plan in invading Karigakur, and that was when one of the leaders of the Hunter Nin division heard his name being called. Aosan. Aosan. Cried a frantic voice. Ao sighs and sees Shijuro run into the room panting. CHMJKRM has short tufty blue hair and dark eyes. He also has pointed shark-like teeth, traits that all known members of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, as well as apprentices shared. He wears square black rimmed glasses connected to what appear to be headphones, a blue striped shirt, and camouflage pattern pants that resemble the clothing Zabuza Mamachi wore during his first appearance. Also, he wears his forehead protector on the front of his holster like a badge on his chest. He carries Hiramekure on his back, wrapped with large bandages. He also has a shuriken holder strapped onto each leg. What is Shijuro now? We were in the middle of an important meeting. He said while the blue-haired swordsman managed to regain his breathing and spoke up. She's back. Mei Sen is back. He said which made the man's eyes widen. What do you mean she's back? She drowned during the failed raid on Yugura's personal ship. Said a man named Anishi Yukimura, the white tiger of the mist. He was 6'1 and had short spiky snow white hair and wore a long sleeved white Chinese shirt with matching pants and black boots with an okatana strapped to his waist. That was when the russet haired woman walked into the tent with a grin on her face. Aw oh, she that hurts. She said and everyone inside the tent's eyes bugged out. And to think I thought we were best friends. She finished with a mock pout on her face. Then May. But how? We were told you drowned. He asked. She would have been had it not been for my children said a feminine voice behind Mei and Kashina walked in behind her, which caused everyone's eyes to bug out and silence filled the room. Oh my god it's the Red Death. 
shouted Koga, the leader of the tracking and scouting squad, he looks like the Koga from Inayasha, only he wears the Kiri Shinobi outfit, while the others just gawked. Um may. What is the wife of Yandane doing here? Isn't she a part of Konoha? Inishi asked the female Turumi who shook her head. Now she and her family reside in Kumo and are working as ninja for hire, and they are going to assist us in ending this war. Her children, Naruto Namikas and Shinku Namikas, saved me when I washed upon the shores of Kaminari no Kuni, and I stayed with them until I fully recovered. I also asked Arakaj for some assistance, and he allowed several of his Anbu and some to assist us. May explained. I see. So who are the other ninjas that are with you aside from your children Kishina-sama? Asked a rugged man who was in his forties and went by the name Benkei. Please there is no need for formalities, and as for others they are Kakashi Haddock, Rinin Yazuka, Anko Midarashi, and Yugo Yazuki, and they last two are my students, as the other two were former students of my husband. She answered and the group looked like they were gonna have heart attacks. Those ninja were practically A ranked in the bingo book, with Kishina being a SS class ranked Kinoichi, whose rep surpassed even Sanadi's. This is too good to be true. Somebody pinch me. Inishi said to himself, but then he yelped and rubbed his arm, due to the fact that Kagura Kagaya pinched his arm and had a grin on her face. She was wearing a battle black kimono with a pair of biker shorts and had an adachi strapped to her back. What he said pinched him so I did. She said with a grin on her face while the other sweat dropped. Meanwhile. Naruto was walking around the village with a dark-skinned Kanoichi holding onto his arm and looking at the sight before them. There appeared to be a lot of medical tents since outside the tents were medical nin treating those who got injured and saw plenty of body bags where family members were crying over the loss of their loved ones. Barry couldn't help but be saddened at this. She knew war wasn't pretty since she and Amoy were war orphans due to the fact that their parents were killed in the last one. As they walked around they heard the sound of someone calling for help and saw two Kirin in. One was female and had raven-colored hair and violet eyes, and she was having trouble holding him up due to the fact that he had a couple of kunai and tanto sticking out of his back, and his right arm seemed to have second-degree burns. The Kira hung in there almost at the medical ward. She said as she tried to hoist him up on her shoulders. Why you should have left me there Kuroko-chan. Akira started and grunted in pain. Shut up. I don't want to hear you talking like that now stay awake you baka. She said and then turned her head to see a male blonde teenager run up to them and a dark-skinned female teenager walk up to them, as well as a small group of medical nin. Oh thank Kami. She said. Here let us help you get him to a tent. Naruto offered and he and Kari carefully placed Akira's arms over his shoulders and Kuroko smiled tiredly as she let Kari take over. Thank you she said as she held her bleeding arm while one of the medic nin walked over and helped heal her arm while the others led Naruto and Kari to one of the medical tents. A few hours later Naruto, Kari, and Kuroko were sitting outside the medical ward while said Kiri Kinoichi had a bandaged arm and a few patches on her face. A medical nin walked out of the tent and wiped a bead of sweat off his forehead. How is he? Kuroko asked the man who sighs but a small smile forms on his face. He'll be fine. He just needs to stay off his feet for a few weeks. Luckily none of those weapons hit his vital organs. The med nin said while Kokoro let out a sigh of relief. Oh thank Kami. She said to herself. Naruto then sat up which made Kari raise an eyebrow in confusion. Come on Kari-chan. We need to head back. He said, which made her nod and get up. Night. The six leaders of the rebel forces along with their platoons of ninja were standing on a hilltop. Naruto was standing beside Kakashi and Anko who were in their war gear and standing in the middle of the leaders was Mei Turumi who was in her war gear and had her blade Kinheim, Blaze Princess, strapped to her back, Nero's blade Red Queen from DMC4. Listen up everyone. She called out, getting the attention of the other ninja. I am gonna be honest with you all. Tomorrow is not promised to us and we'll more than likely die in this final attempt to free our home and country from the darkness that has plagued it since the Yande Mizukage started the bloodline purge. All I ask from you is to look out for one another and should you fall, take as many of our enemies as you can with you until you breathe your last breath. Tonight will be the fall of the bloody mist and the rise of a new era for us and the next generation. She said and raised her fist in the air for Kiri. She cried out. Anishi raised his fist in the air. For Kiri. Benkei did the same as his fellow comrades. For Kiri. As did Kagura Kagaya. For Kiri. And Koga Kurukami, Black Wolf, did the same as well. For Kiri. And finally Ao. For Kiri. Shin Mamachi stood forwards and drew his Zabatu and raised it in the air. For Kiri. He shouted which was responded by the other Kiri Nin, let out a battle cry that echoed throughout the forest. Izukage Tower. Iguru was currently wearing his cage robes with a hat overshadowing his eyes with his anbu flanking him. Cry out all you want you fools. You are merely delaying the inevitable. He said in a deep tone. A few hours later. 
The sound of metal clashing against metal, battle cries, and flames burning, echoed throughout Karigakur no Sado, and apparently the rebel side was advancing due to them attacking the less guarded areas instead of the main gate. They also managed to cut off their backup supplies and some of the communication towers. Right now Naruto and Kasashi were taking down ranked Kirin in left and right. Said blonde ducked when a broadsword whizzed past his head, taking off a few strands, and delivered a chakra-enhanced punch to the man's gut and sent him flying into a concrete wall. That was when a chain ensnared his arm and saw five Kiri ascend towards him, with their kunai and blades drawn, ready to skewer him. Naruto closes his eyes for a few seconds, and they snap open revealing his Sharingan. Chidori Nagashi, Thousand Bird Current. He said quietly and a powerful electronic discharge erupts from every part of his body which electrocutes the Kirinin and makes them cry out in sheer agony due to having volts of electricity course through their body. They collapse onto the ground twitching in pain while the current continues to surge around the blonde. Kakashi just knocked out a jonin rank nin with a chop to the back of the neck and turned his head sideways to see Naruto, and his eyes widened at what he saw, especially when he saw the Sharingan in the blonde eyes. The copy nin shook his head and turned his attention toward a small group of charging Kiri ninja heading right from him. I must be dreaming because I just saw Naruto have the Sharingan, but that's insane. The battle must be getting to me. He then pulls out his ninjato and sprints toward the other group. Naruto turned his head to see a group of bloodline users being quartered by a squad of Anbu who were performing hand seals, and several water dragons descended towards them. Naruto did a few hand seals and slammed his hands on the ground. Doton. Kato Toride, Earth Release. Earth Fortress, he called out. Before the dragons had a chance to engulf the bloodline users, three large walls of earth rose up in front of them and protected them from the water, much to the Anbu's shock. The first Anbu asked while Naruto phased behind them by rising from the ground, like Madara did when he fought Fu and Torn. One Anbu snaps out of his stupor and swings his ninjato at Naruto's head, only for it to phase through, and the blonde smirks as he grabs them both, creates a vortex that sucks in four of the Anbu, and the rest charge at Naruto, and said blonde does the same, but pulls out a long chain that is connected to two bracelets that are attached to his wrists. The Anbu make an attempt to run their blades through him, but like last time, they along with the blades phase through the blonde and afterwards, twisted his body in order to ensnare them in the chain, and sent surges of electricity through the chains which electrocute the Anbu who also collapsed on the ground twitching. Naruto removes the braces and smirks at the bloodline holders who nod back and shunshin to join their comrades. He then leaps on top of a building, only to see a large blue two-tailed feline roaring and slamming her paw onto the ground and sending the Kirin in that were fighting the rebels flying. Well it looks like Kitty Cat has that section under control. He says and then performs a series of hand seals and places his hand on the ground. A puff of smoke appeared beside him and standing before him was none other than Hitomi. Well it's about time you summoned me. She said while folding her arms under her bosoms while Naruto smirks. I hope you have a way in making this up to me. Naruto points to the battle going on and a toothy grin forms on her face. That'll work. She said while rubbing her hands together. Try to keep the casualties to a minimum Hitomi-chan, since my family and friends are down there also. He instructed. She nodded back, gave him a mock salute and vanished in a flash of red. That was when an ex- Better go help out whoever caused that against the overgrown came, Turtle. He thought and once again used Madara's Jikikin ninjutsu to warp away. But the others. Anko had just dropped in the back of his head and afterwards raised her fist back. Sane to Jashu, many hidden shadow snake hands. She cried out and a swarm of big snakes shot out of the sleeve of her trench coat in an instant, constricting and biting any Anbu nin that were in her path. After she called them back, she saw Shinjin slam two Kiri nin into the concrete and then pull out his buster blade and swat three away like flies with the blunt end of his blade. Banko appeared beside him and deflected a volley of shuriken. You know since this battle started I haven't seen you actually use that blade. She stated while the man smirks under his mask. That's because use brings about wear, tear, and rust, and this beauty's repairs are expensive. Besides, only those who are strong in my eyes are worthy enough to fall to my blade. He said as he performed a series of hand seals. Tsukdan no Jutsu, Water Release. Water Shark Missile Technique. Water rose from a large water fountain and formed into a shark with a head nearly at the same height as a man, and it moves to attack a squad of enemy nin at high speed and hits them with a powerful impact that sends water everywhere. Nice. My turn. She said and did a quick series of hand seals. Doton. Dehebidon, Earth Release. Earth Snake Bullet. The earth in front of her softened and the mud formed into a serpent made of mud that rose from the ground and hissed as it ascended towards a group of. Shinjin whistled as he had a headlock. Not bad. He said and snapped the Jonin's neck, killing him instantly. 
Liu Gao and Kashina were synchronized in their swordplay and were simultaneously switching from offense to defense whenever they faced a Kirinin. Shinku was evading some kunai swipes from two Chunin who had their broadswords out, and then she leaned backwards as their broadsword swung over her head. They attempted to make another attempt only for Kagura to appear and block them with two single-edge ivory katanas, surprising them. Amoy appeared above them and brought his o katanas out in a reversed position. Kumorik. Mikazuki Kiri, cloud style. Crescent moon beheading. Amoy swings his blade in a clockwise arc and strikes them in the back, which causes them to cry out in pain and fall to the ground. Amoy stops the technique and then reverses the blade sides when he senses three nin behind them. Kumorik. Yurijiri, cloud style reverse beheading. He does a reversal swinging arc and slits their throats instantly. Not a bad kid. Those were some sweet moves. Kagura said with a smirk on her face while Amoy shrugs. Thanks but it's no big deal really. He started while Kagaya chuckled. Skilled and humble, you're alright in my book. She said while well, Shinku got up and vanished in a blur, striking down several ninja using the shukichiki, Sajiro said his technique with her katana and reappearing with it drawn out but sheathed it once again. I hope Nai-san is doing okay. She says to herself and goes to help Rin who was treating the injured while a group of Cloud Anbu were protecting the injured. Izukage Tower. Mei was the first to leap out of the smoke and land on the rooftop skidding backwards with Kenham drawn. Inishi was the next one to land next to her but with the left sleeve of his jacket torn off. The snow-haired swordsman growled in frustration and ripped the jacket off, wearing a sleeveless black muscle shirt underneath it. Are you okay with Inishi? Mei asked her childhood friend who nodded. Yeah I'm good. Damn team tried to blow my arm off. He said with a scowl on his face. That was when Yagura and his cage robes appeared with a blank expression on his face. Don't assume that just because you planned a surprise attack on me doesn't mean you'll win or have you forgotten about our encounter a while back mate Rumi. The man asked which made the girl scowl. Yagura do you realize what your actions have done to our village? Our country? How many lives were destroyed? Why are you doing this? What happened to make you change and become a tyrant? She asked a Jinchuriki who remained unemotional. What I have done is purge our land of these accursed bloodlines, and I intend to carry on my ideals in purging this world of the very thing that starts wars and causes destruction, and anyone who disagrees with my ideals are traitors and deserve to die. He replied which made the two clench their fists in anger. Is that so? Said a voice behind Mei and Inishi, and the two turned their heads and saw Naruto walking towards them, with the difference being that he had the Sharingan activated and had what appeared to be a guardless katana that had a black hilt with white diamond patterns on it drawn. Inishi's and Mei's eyes widened when they saw this. Sharingan. Inishi asks himself. Bigura on the other hand narrows his eyes. Great, another ninja has violated the soil of my country with his vile blood. He said darkly while Naruto kept his expression calm and sharp. This coming from a cage who's the vessel for an overgrown turtle. He said which made the man's eyes widen a little. I believe you contain the Sanbi no Kaidai game, three-tailed giant turtle, correct? How did you know? Unless you're a vessel too. Yugura asked, and his answer was Naruto with a smile on his face. You can say that but sadly I don't have the time to explain it to you. After all, there is no match for Tin. He replied which made the other's eyes widened especially Mei, because she believed that he was the vessel for the Kaiubi no Yoko, and wondered why he said ten tails, because she thought that there were only nine. Don't patronize me fool. There is no ten-tailed biju. The Mizukage said and then threw off his hat and robes. Yugura has unkempt grey hair, pink eyes, and what seems to be a stitch-like scar running from under his left eye all the way down his cheek. He has a dull expression and wears a grey undershirt with short mesh sleeves, which has a metal plate of a Karigakur forehead protector sewn onto it. He also wears a long green scarf around his neck, a turquoise sash around his waist, paired with a green ingimenta that hangs on his legs, and black pants. He's one of the few ninjas to not wear sandals, instead relying on a pair of brown boots open on the back. On his back he carries a staff-like pole weapon with uneven hooks with a green flower on the end of the larger hook. Naruto on the other hand chuckles and releases a burst of Kai that surprises Yugura who felt the murderous intent and for some reason, he saw what looked like the image of a beast with ten tails and had an eye with nine times around four concentric rings. Dark blue chakra slowly forms around Naruto and flows off of him like fire and the tiles underneath him cracked and started to spread out. Inishi and Mei were amazed when they felt the chakra emitting from Naruto's body. Incredible. The chakra emitting from his body is so powerful and this isn't even the Bijuu's chakra. It's all him. The white tiger of the mist thought. Don't think so highly of yourself boy. You are strong, but you are no match for a cage. He stated. Mei San Inishi San. Naruto said quietly, getting their attention. Yugura is being controlled by a powerful Yugura. He said, which made their eyes widen. Are you sure? 
May asked and Naruto nodded. Yes. My eyes can see it and whoever is doing it can use it even when he's not in the area. To pull a stunt like that requires someone who is beyond the level of a cage. He answered. So what should we do? Inishi asked. Our only option is to weaken him enough to sever the connection between him and him and then break the. Naruto finishes while Inishi scoffs and draws his Watatachi, the blade Inishi used in Rurouni Kenshin, Hoeta Tora, White Tiger. Easier said than done kid. Yugura has full control over his and its power. He stated while Naruto grinned. And so do I. In a sense because I am in a way the new Jubi. He said and thought to himself. Yugura pulls his staff off his back, twirls it a few times, and goes into a pajutsu stance. Naruto twirls his blade a few times and places it in a reversal grip while Inishi goes into a stance and Mei twists the hilt of her blade, making it ignite into a flaming blade. Listen should he morph into his chakra cloak or biju form. I want you to let me handle it. He said getting side glances from them. Are you sure? Inishi asked the blonde who nodded. Well his Sharingan started to spin rapidly. Okay then just be careful. Yugura is highly skilled in using water and I'm talking about Nidame level. He answered. That was when Naruto pulled a kunai out and chucked it at high speed. Kunai cage bushin no jutsu, shadow kunai clone technique. Naruto said as he performed a series of hand seals. There were now round over a hundred kunai ascending towards Igura, who started to twirl his hook staff around clockwise in front of himself and deflect the kunais. Inishi took this opportunity to sprint around Yugura and, when he got close enough, aimed for his side and swung his blade. Yugura manages to deflect all the blades and then blacks an upward slash delivered by Inishi who smirks. Poor form of defense Mizukich. He taunted. Shujeki Kumsei, kicking sword rush. Inishi kicks the back edge of his blade to increase the speed and force of the strike when he swings his watm upward. The force from the kick was so powerful that it forced Yugura's staff back and in the air, leaving him open for an attack. Mei appears with her blade blazing and swings it at his torso. Hamuradama, burning soul. She cried out and swung at him diagonally, leaving a blazing trail of fire, while the hit slashed a shocked Yugura across the chest and torso, only to burst into water. Shidamizu Bunshin. She cursed and then had to duck to avoid being impaled by the small hook on the end of the cage's staff and leaps away. Inishi leaps into the air with his blade in a reversal position and seems to be channeling wind chakra into the blade. Shiraitu, white sickle. He swings his blade twice, releasing two white crescent blades made of wind. Yugura leaps away and senses Naruto behind him and blocks a downward slash with his staff and the blonde smirks. Dodori Nagashi, Thousand Bird Current. Electricity erupts from the blonde's body and zaps Yugura, who grunts in pain and is slightly paralyzed from the attack. Inishi took this opportunity to strike the man in the chest with a powerful palm strike that makes Yugura cough up saliva, and Mei appears and kicks him in the chin, sending him flying high into the air. Naruto appears behind him while in the air. Cage bio, leaf shadow dance. He said quietly while Yugura's eyes widened as black bandages instantly wrapped around his body and ensnared him in a cocoon-like state. Naruto grabs the man and starts to slowly rotate until they started to spin rapidly at incredible speed and descend towards the ground. Amit Renge, Initial Lotus. The blonde called out and he piled drives the Mizukage into the rooftop head first, making the place shake slightly and cause dust to rise up into the air. Naruto leaps out of the dust and in between the two leaders of the rebel faction and frowns. Stay on your toes because this is far from over. Naruto said as the dust cleared and revealed the broken body of Yugura and it melted into water. They heard a boot slam on a roof tile and turned their heads to see Yugura glaring at them. I have to say you three are impressive, especially you boys. But even though you outnumber me you don't outmatch me. He said as he performed a series of hand seals. Sushma, water release. Water shockwave. Yugura creates a spiraling vortex of water from the moisture in the air and the vortex then proceeds to explode from the top in the form of a wave that descends to the three. Naruto does a small series of hand seals and slams his palms onto the wall. Doten. Doryuheki. A large wide wall of earth appeared in front of the trio and stopped the impact of the wave which shook the tower and the remaining water dripped down the roof. Inishi took this opportunity to scale the wall until he reached the top while Mayor ran around the earth wall, doing a series of hand seals. The Oten. Yagan Nami. Her cheeks bulged and she spat out torrents of hot magma that covered up the entire roof and kept Yugura in his place, but Mizukage coughs and fires a torrent of water from his mouth which hits the magma and cools it off as steam rises into the air. You little lave trick won't save you Mei Teru. He didn't get to finish due to the fact that he hissed out in pain when he saw the skin on his arm peel away as the steam hit his skin. Have you forgotten about my second keke you fool? Mei taunted as she did a horse seal and sucked air into her mouth. Futen. Kumu no jutsu, boil release. Skilled miss technique. 
released a corrosive acid-like mist from her mouth which ascends and engulfs Yugura. Did she get him? Inishi asked himself and his answer was a bluish-gray ethereal chakra hand launching itself at the earth wall and strikes it, demolishing said wall which caused Inishi to follow the crumbling wall and descend towards the jagged rocks, or would have, had his falling body not have been stopped by a human-sized cushion of sand. What the? He asked himself. Another one shot out of the mist and ascended towards a shocked May, who had little time to escape it until a wall of what appeared to be sand rose in front of her and it deflected the chakra hand. May blinks in shock when she sees this. Sand. But how? May asked herself and saw Anishi ascend towards the ground on a sand cushion that landed him down safely. Said sand dissipated and they watched as it ascended towards Naruto, who had a large gourd that swallowed up the sand. Stay focused. That acid mist May sand conjured up only pissed him off. Naruto said while a tick mark appeared on Anishi's head. No really. Anishi asked as a vein throbbed on his head. Anishi calmed down. May replied while the man snorted but tilted his round shades up. The gourd Naruto had was sealed up in one of the small scrolls he had, and the Yagura walked out of the mist with a dangerous look in his eye. I guess playtime's over huh? Good. Naruto unsheathes his blade and has it in a reverse grip. Cause I'm about to show you what this kid can do. He charges at Yagura who gets into a bajutsu stance and says the blonde vanishes and appears behind Yagura, swinging his blade diagonally at the man's back. Yagura spins his body and his staff clashes against Naruto's katana, and the two are in a power struggle. Naruto smirks while Yugura's eyes widen when a cage bunshin appears behind him ready to run him through with its katana, but he presses a switch and the hook on the end of his staff fires and strikes the clone, making it dispel. Naruto took this opportunity to grab his shoulder, plant his foot on the staff and use it as a spring, and struck Yugura in the chin with his knee. Said blonde twists his body around lands back on the ground. Yugura spins his body around and swings the end that had the hook connected to a chain, and it wraps around Naruto's arm. Said blonde channels the Chidori through his blade and cuts it down. Yugura scowls when this happens while Inishi appears over him with his blade raised in the air. Shmatmse, destructive palm sword rush. Inishi uses his palm to push the Wado and performs a downward strike, which Yugura manages to block, but the speed and force from the attack causes a crater to form underneath the. May on the other hand took this opportunity to slide under the man and break his balance with a slide kick, making the man stumble over, while Inishi performs a roundhouse kick and strikes Yugura in the jaw with the heel of his boot and sent the man flying, and Yugura crashes to the ground. He shakes the cobwebs out of his head, only to hear the sound of birds chirping, and he looks up to see Naruto descending towards him with his left arm reared back and covered in white electricity. Chidori, thousand birds. He called out and swung his arm at Yugura's chest, but the cage vanishes while Naruto slams his lightning-covered hand into the spot that the man was currently at and curses when he appears again with his staff raised and ready to drive the large hook into his skull, only for Inishi to appear and stop the hook with the sharp edge of his blade, but used one hand and had his right hand reared back. Into a palm strike. He swings it forward and strikes the man in the torso, making Yugura grit his teeth in pain. I'm not done yet. Futon. Case Shushu, wind release. Wind palm. Yugura is sent flying backwards and is sent flying off the roof and into a building, causing an explosion to occur. Naruto manages to free his arm and stands back up. Thanks. He said getting a smirk from th white haired man. Don't mention it. So how is it that you have the Sharingan and were able to manipulate sand like that? Last I heard, the Achiha clan was nearly wiped out by one that went rogue. He asked. That will be explained in due time but for now. Naruto closed his eyes and his eyes morphed into the eternal Manjikyu Sharingan. We have an extremely pissed off cage to deal with. He said while well, an explosion erupted from the building Yugura crashed into and standing in the rubble was Yugura in a three-tailed clock form, similar to Naruto four-tailed states. And was snarling at the trio for a few seconds, but then released a bestial roar that echoed throughout the village. Yugura then opened his mouth and gathered both positive black chakra no chakura and negative white chakra, Minasu no shiro chakura, shaped it into a sphere, swallowed it, and then compressed it inside his mouth. Naruto's eyes widened when he saw this. Shit. Inishi. May. Grab my arms. Naruto screamed which surprised them. But why Inishi asked only for Naruto to grab his and May's arm as Yugura fired the menacing ball at the three that ascended towards them at high speeds. A large explosion rocks the village and mushroom-shaped smoke appears in the sky. When it cleared the tower was reduced to rubble and the three could be seen nowhere in sight. The trio crashed into the ground away from Yugura and the blonde let out a sigh of relief. That was too close. He said to himself while the two got up and the blonde stood up. That was a Jikikin ninjutsu he used. Does he know how to use his father's technique? But I didn't see him throw a kunai or use a formula. Inishi thought. Looks like I've got no other choice. He said and looked at Mei and Inishi. 
I have to take on Yukura personally. He started and looked at them. Are you capable of using your Bijuu's power at its fullest, Naruto? May asked and got a nod from the blonde. The Ami Sensei Karabi took me to a temple where I could learn how to use my Bijuu's chakra and powers at its fullest, but I can't use it fully if you're around cause I don't want you to get caught in the crossfire. He said as the two looked conflicted but hesitantly nodded. Fine we'll keep our distance but be careful Naruto-kun. May said, getting a smile from the blonde. I will. I'm gonna lead him away from the village and near the shores, since no civilians will be around the area. He said and warped away again. Said blonde once again appears at the wreck site with Yagura who was in his beast form looking around for them and growling slowly. Hey Yagura. Naruto called out getting the man's attention and saw the blonde flipped him off while giving him a raspberry. I've seen academy students with better aim. Are you positive you're a cage? He taunted out and knew that since the Sambi was more animal-like and lacked intelligence, he knew the man would get irritated in an instant. Said Vessel snarls out in anger and lunges at the blonde who warped away, while said crashed to the ground, leaving a large crater. Naruto appeared standing on a destroyed rooftop crouching down. Wow now that was scary. I thought you said you had control over the shell head's power Yagwa-chan. He drawled out and leapt away when an extended chakra tendril tried to grab him. Yagura leapt out of the crater and saw the blonde running towards the outskirts of the village, with Yagura going after him. That's the right shell for brains to follow the leader. Naruto thought as he increased the pace. Open field. Naruto landed on an open field that was surrounded by a few mountains and was near the shoreline waiting for Yugura to arrive, and then he smirks when the man in his form landed in the clearing, loudly making the ground shake. Foolish boy. Did you honestly think you could get away from me? Yugura snarled out while Naruto's smirk turned into a feral grin. Where did you get the idea that I was running from your team? Now that we're away from the battleground I can deal with you and not have to hold back. He said as his canines turned into fangs and while a yellow golden chakra cloak with ten tails surrounded his body and the pupil in his EMS turned into a slit and his skin started to slowly peel off. Igura's wide eyes widened in disbelief as he saw this. Surprised. I told you that I wasn't kidding when I said I possessed a ten-tailed beast in my body and now you're gonna see firsthand what I'm capable of. He said as an animalistic snarl escaped from his lips while his eyes glowed red while a yellow dome formed around his body. Said blonde dropped on all fours while his fingernails and toenails extended and formed into claws. He then bowed his head for a few seconds and let out a bestial roar, which caused a powerful shockwave to be released, and the dome shot up and formed into a pillar of yellow light. Back in Kiri. Ujito released a tailed beast sonic roar that sent a squad of jonin flying into some rubble and was about to move forward, but then stopped and looked up to see a pillar of yellow light. Samui has cut down and saw Ujito looking at the pillar of light. Ujito what is it? She asked. It's Naruto-kun. Whoever he's fighting is making him use his powers, but the odd thing is. It isn't Kaiubi's from what Nico's telling me and says that it's something more powerful than the fox. She stated which made her eyes widened. She's right, you know. Said another feminine voice. They turned their heads to see a red head with red slit eyes. Hitomi looked up at Yujito's form and grinned. Hey kitty cat, how's life treating you? Nekamada's eyes widened and Nibi switched with Yujito for a second. Hey Hitomi. How did you get out of your vessel? She asked which came close to shouting while the vixen just chuckled. Oh that is a story. She stated while Samui's eyes bugged out. Ashina was helping an injured Koga to one of the infirmaries, but then she paused and looked at a pillar of chakra. Sachi I hope you're not doing anything reckless. She said to herself. Back with Naruto and Yukura. As the light pillar ended, Naruto was in the version 2 form, Karabi's and Naruto's form, with a mixture of solid yellow and black chakra covering his body. His appearance was in the form of a humanoid wolf with ten tails flailing behind it. Had black surrounded his face and his eyes glowed red, and it snarled lowly at a shocked and stunned Yugura. Naruto took a step forward, and his footsteps sounded like thunderclaps and flexed his clawed hands. He suddenly vanished in a flash of yellow, and the next thing Yugura knew a hand wrapped around his face and was slammed into the ground, creating a large and wide crater. Naruto let out a roar and flung Yugura into the side of a mountain, and a portion of it collapsed on top of him. That was when a fast and powerful stream of water shot towards Naruto. Said blonde snarled and stopped the attack with just one hand, and it only made him skid back a few inches. When it stopped, ethereal chakra arms shot out and grabbed Naruto's arms, and the young Namikas growled and used two of his tails to sever them and make the stumps retract and flung them off and fired a series of menacing balls at Yugura's current location, which resulted in multiple explosions occurring. Yugura managed to leap out of the explosion only for Naruto to appear with his fist cocked back. 
He let out a primal roar and slugged the miniature Sambi in the face full force and sent him descending towards the ground at high speed, which resulted in the ground exploding, and Yugura went skidding through the forest, across the sand, and finally entering the ocean shores and crashing in the water. Creating a powerful tidal wave. Naruto landed back onto the ground and let out a victory roar. Before he glowed and morphed back into his normal state, panting a little. I guess my current body wasn't capable of handling that much of the Jubi's power yet. He said to himself as he saw an enormous crater connected to a deep ditch-like trail that left a path of destruction through the forest. Yes I went a little overboard. Oh well. He said and once again warped away and appeared on a rock near the ocean shores. Come out, come out wherever you are. He said quietly and he saw bubbles near the open ocean, and then he grinned. Looks like a shell for brains isn't done yet. The blonde thought as the bubbles grew and grew until the water started to slowly rise and revealed the true form of the Sanbi Kaiodai game. Chapter 6. Rebellion, War, and Truth PT. 4. Shores of Kuridakur. Naruto stood quietly on a rock as he stared at the Sanbi no Kaiodai game, three-tailed giant turtle, while water dripped down the beast's body. The three tails primarily resembles a turtle, but with a crab-like shell, and three shrimp-like tails. It has a pair of human arms and hands, but no hind legs. Its right eye is constantly closed, indicating some sort of injury, and because of this, it is particularly vulnerable to attacks directed at its right eye. I can't say that this form is an improvement, since you look like something Yujito-chan threw up from eating bad shellfish. The blonde taunted and snarled angrily at being insulted. You puny insects. Even now that I reveal my true form to you, you still mock me. I'll make sure that you suffer for this and will be the prime example of those who go against me and will die. Yugura growled out and unleashed a roar so powerful that the shockwave split the water and sent sand flying in different directions. Naruto's hair swayed back from the roar but remained on the rock he was standing on until it died down. Phew dude you need to lay off the fish. There's a new invention that was made and I believe it is called a mint. Naruto replied and for emphasis waved his hand in front of his face in a disgusted manner. The guru growled and raised his large hand into the air and over Naruto's form and brought it down fast and hard and when it landed, it caused the earth to shake violently. The guru raised his enlarged hand in order to see the smear that he made but only saw his imprint. The Sanbi growled and looked around for its prey. Naruto was sitting on the beast's head with his right hand covered in lightning chakra and it was light blue. Raiden. Jikido Ikazuchi, lightning releases. Raging thunder. Powerful volts of electricity shot around Yugura's Sanbi body, causing them to howl out in agony as countless volts of electricity hit every single part of its body simultaneously. After the technique ended, Naruto leapt off the beast's head and landed in front of the beast who snarls and sweeps at Naruto, who simply phases through the arm, and then the water hybrid attempts to backhand him, only for Naruto to simply stop the beast's arm with one hand. Such a mindless beast you are Yugura-chan. Naruto chastises and grabs a hold of one of its large fingers and slowly lifts it out of the water. Someone should teach you some manners. He then tosses him over his shoulder and slams him into the sandy rocky shores, sending waves of sand and pieces of rocks everywhere. Let's take this fight somewhere less wet. Naruto suggested as she activated his eternal Manjiku Sharingan. Kamui, might of the gods. The area around them ripples and Yugura is sucked into a void instantly and the ripples end. Naruto warps away afterwards. A few seconds later a ripple appears around some village ruins that were caused by the civil war, and a vortex appears. Coming down from it was none other than Yugura and Sanbi form and came crashing down into the village hard. Naruto appeared on top of a destroyed building with his eternal Manjiku Sharingan. There. This will do. He's out of his element and there are no people around. The Sanbi gets back on its feet and snarls as it looks around for Naruto. Said lets out a loud whistle. Yugura turns his head to see Naruto grinning and flipping him off and said transformed Mizukage growls and picks up a large boulder. Naruto ends his charade and starts to get serious. His chakra flares and morphs into a yellow layer of what appeared to be cloaked armor with lightning static coursing around it. I gotta remind myself to thank E-sensei for teaching me this technique. He said to himself as the Raiden no Yoroi, lightning release armor, flared up causing his hair to spike up as well, similar to how E spiked up when he fought Sasuke. The Sanbi roars and chucks the boulder at Naruto. Said blonde reared his fist back and let out a battle cry as he swung his fist forward and smashed the boulder to pieces. The Sanbi then grabbed a large building and chucked it at Naruto who vanished while the building smashed the location Naruto was at and appeared over Yugura's form with his right leg raised. Jirichin Darapu, guillotine drop. Naruto cries out and performs a downward kick on his opponent. The heel of his foot slams down onto the water hybrid skull and sends him crashing into the ground, creating a 20-foot-wide crater that causes dust and debris to fly in different directions. 
Naruto lands in front of the down with his armor still active until a large gray hand shoots out and attempts to grab Naruto, but the blonde cuts off three of its fingers, causing the beast to howl in pain. And he leaps into the air. Pain. Kiryu Enden, fire release. Dragon flame missile. He unleashes a stream of white hot fire that hits the Sanbi hard, making the beast roar in anger as his skin was scorched by the hot flames. After it ended Naruto landed behind one of the tails and dodged the one that tried to squash him and then the other attempted to, but he leapt into the air doing an aerial somersault and then slammed his chakra enhanced fist into the beast's shell, causing it to crack. Igura was getting frustrated and unleashed a roar so powerful that it sent a shock wave around the entire area and destroyed everything around it. Naruto was sent flying off its back and crashing through three wrecked buildings, but he flips backwards and lands back on his feet, skidding backwards and shaking the cobwebs out of his head. Okay now he's pissed. He stated and leapt on top of a destroyed rooftop and saw Yagura's form with its head raised and was gathering positive black chakra no chakura and negative white chakra, minasu no shiro chakura, shape it into a sphere and then compress it inside its mouth. Naruto's eyes widened when he saw the compressed chakra get bigger and bigger. Is he nuts? That Amari, menacing ball, has enough power behind it to level a quarter of water country. He said as the ball became larger. But the rebel faction. The Gura Kugaya had just run Kiri Anbu through with her bone blade and kicked him off the building and sensed something powerful. She turned her head and her eyes widened in disbelief when she saw a large sphere made of energy. Oh Kami no. He wouldn't. She said in horror while Benkei landed beside her. The Gura we managed to gain control of the eastern sector of. He saw the horrified look on her face and wondered what she was looking at until his expression became similar to her. No. That attack it's. Mei, Inishi, and the others also saw the menacing ball and couldn't believe what Yugura was about to do. No, Yugura doesn't do it. Mei begged. Yujito too was shocked by the size of the ball. That menacing ball is too unstable. If he completes it, half of water country will become a charred barren wasteland. The vessel for Nibi stated while the other ninja, both rebel and enemy, each had horrified looks on their faces. No. The Mizukage wouldn't. One Kiri Jonin stated. Hitomi cursed and sped off, heading to where Naruto and Yugura were as did the other leaders and Naruto's family. The ground around Yugura's beast form started to tremble, and debris started to slowly rise from the power emitting from the ball of compressed energy. Naruto's train of thought was running a mile a minute. Damn it, how do I stop that? If I hit him and he drops that attack this place will become a giant crater, but if his fires it, half of water country will be destroyed, and there's no way I'm using the Kuchius. Yat Ikuzushi no Jutsu, summoning. Food cart destroyer technique. Come on, Naruto thinks damn it. He said to himself until the idea flashed in his head. Got it. He then pulls out a tri-pronged kunai that had a black seal tag with white seal formulas on it. I just hope I got this down all the way. He prayed. The leaders as well as their allies made it to the ruins and they saw Sanbi roar as the energy ball was now twice as big as it was. Hey, is that Naruto? Anko asked as she saw the blonde. Kashina's eyes widened in fear as she saw her son not moving away from the attack. What is he doing? Aniki gets out of there. Shinku said to herself. Dynamic is. Sanbi Amari, three-tailed menacing ball. Yugura roared and fired the chakra blast. Everyone hit the ground. Mei screamed and they each got down. The menacing ball made its way towards Naruto making debris scattered due to its speed and velocity. Not gonna happen. Naruto said as he went through a series of fast-paced hand seals with a tri-pronged kunai in his hand. As it got closer and was about to hit the blonde, it appeared to get absorbed into what appeared to be a barrier with kanji seals stretching outwards and sucking the attack in. What? Impossible. That was my strongest attack. Yugura roared in disbelief and anger as his menacing ball was now completely gone and saw that Naruto held a Horatian kunai in both hands. Mei was the first to look up and saw nothing happened, aside from the large trenches in the ground, and saw Naruto was completely unharmed. The other ninja looked up and their eyes bugged when they saw nothing. What the? How did he do it? Anishi asked only to hear an explosion occur, and they looked back to see a light blue dome form on top of the ocean and saw large waves crashing into the rocky cliffs and the ground trembling. How did he do that? Yugao wondered while Kakashi remained silent. That was a Jikyukan Kekai Ninjutsu, space-time barrier technique, and it was similar to Minato Sensei's. When did Naruto learn how to do Jikyukan Jutsu? And that time I saw his eyes change. He thought as he narrowed his eyes and then they widened in disbelief at what he saw. Both of Naruto's eyes were similar to the Manjikyu Sharingan. So he did have the Sharingan and the Manjikyu form no less. How did he gain them? Igura's bestial form let out a roar of frustration and lunged at Naruto who remained in his position and calm. What's he doing? He'll get crushed. Kagura stated. Naruto got out of there. 
Kerry cried as the Sambi cocked its fist back and roared while swinging it forward only for a golden ethereal skeletal hand to stop the fist. Wh what the? Yugura said in disbelief. This has gone on for too long. Naruto said in a calm yet cold tone. A flaming chakra with a red outline flared around his body and grew until a skeletal figure manifested around Naruto. I never thought I'd have to use this against a beast like you, especially since this is my first time using it. The skeletal figure's eyes glowed red and muscle and tissue fabricated and coiled around the figure, giving it a humanoid form until armor that represented the one samurai war in the feudal era formed around the body until the armored helmet took on the form of a fox head with jagged teeth that appeared to be snarling. Strapped to its ash was a katana. The armored hand suddenly swatted the hand away and struck the straight in the face and sent the beast crashing through several buildings. Unfortunately I don't have time to play around so I'm gonna end this quickly or else this entire country will be reduced to a barren wasteland. Yugura says hello to Susanoo, god of the raging storm. The ethereal spirit reaches for its katana and draws the sword and it ignites onto an ethereal flaming blade. Yugura shoots out of the rubble roaring in pure rage and charges blindly at Naruto. Just like a mindless beast to charge into a fight blindly. Naruto stated while an ethereal shield formed around Susanoo's left arm. The Sanbi crashed right into the shield which barely blew Susanoo back and they got into a battle of strength. Susanoo uses the shield to knock Sanbi away and swings the blade downwards, penetrating the shell and cutting through skin. Brah. What is that blade and how can it hurt me in my biju state? Yugura wailed out as he backed off and swiped at the ethereal spirit that blocked the attack with the shield and then hacked off the beast's arm. Another agonizing wail escaped from its lips and attempted to regrow the arm only for Naruto to hack off a piece of its shell and perform a series of slashes across its body. Igura staggered around trying to stand firm with its one arm. He tried to regrow the arm, but nothing happened. Wh what in the? I can't recover my arm. What did you do to me you damn brat? He roared out only for the ethereal blade to be plunged into its skull and freeze up. It's done. Naruto said calmly while the ethereal spirit started to pull the blade backwards and started to slowly absorb the Sambi. Wh what are you doing? Yugura asked as it struggled to get away only for it to get sucked in a lot faster. I'm draining you of your beast's chakra. Naruto said as more of Yugura's beast form started to get sucked in. And no. Stop this at once. Stop. He cried out as more of it got sucked into the blade until Yugura could be seen on one knee. After sucking away the beast's chakra, Susanoo sheathed its blade. This war is over Yugura and your reign is history. Naruto said as he took a step forwards only for his eyes to widen as he felt an untold amount of pain rack his entire body. He suddenly gripped his shirt and he vomited out a glob full of blood. Everyone's eyes widened when they saw this and Hitomi cursed under her breath. Damn it. I warned him that it was too soon to use that technique even if he is the new Jubi. She said to herself. What's going on? He was fine not too long ago and now he's on the ground coughing up blood. Mei stared and looked at Kishina who was shocked beyond belief. Kishina did Naruto gain any type of disease by any chance? She asked the Redeed who shook her head. No, he and Shinku have been healthy since the day they were born and haven't gotten any form of disease at all. She answered. Naruto collapsed on one knee and started to cough up blood for a few seconds while Susanoo receded into its skeletal form. He looked at the ground and saw his vision was getting blurry. Damn it. I should have taken Hitomi-chan's advice and not use Susanoo until my body could adjust to my powers. He slowly got back on his feet, attempting to brush off the pain, while Susanoo got back into its humanoid form. The guru got back on his feet with bloody murder in his eyes. Damn you boy. Do you realize what you've done? You ruined everything. He screamed and pulled out a series of kunai with tags connected to them and threw them. They made contact and exploded, but when the smoke cleared a shield was protecting Naruto, who was talking towards Yugura's shocked form, until he snapped out of it and fired a series of large water bullets that hit the shield, but they were shrugged off. He staggered back and his knees became wobbly. Your chakra is almost gone, Yugura. Give up. Naruto said calmly as his body tensed up in pain, but he attempted to shake it off. Yugura snarled and pulled his hook staff. Never. He cried and leapt into the air with the staff raised over his head. He attempted to drive the blade into the shield, only for it to be deflected and sent him crashing into the ground while he lost his weapon. Susanoo receded and the aura around Naruto faded and he deactivated his eyes. When Yugura got up again, a fingerless gloved hand wrapped around his throat and slammed him into a concrete wall. Naruto cocked his fist back and slammed it into Yugura's gut, making him cough out blood. Naruto then did a ram seal and activated his Sharingan, making Yugura's eyes widened as he gazed into them and saw the spin rapidly. Kai. Naruto called out, causing Yugura's eyes to snap out of their glazed form. The blonde then raised his hand back, and purple flames engulfed the tips which hid the kanji for metal, wood, fire, earth, and wind. 
Ajo Fuin, five elemental seal. Naruto called out and slammed his fingertips around the cage's stomach, making him gasp out in pain and then slump over into unconsciousness. But Madara. The man was in an underground bay sitting cross-legged in the shadows until his Sharingan eyes snapped open. What is this? Someone has removed the Jinjutsu I placed on Yagura, but that's impossible. He then made an attempt to perform a ram seal only for a pair of Sharingan eyes to appear before him glowing, and he let out a gasp. No way. There is someone out there who wields a Sharingan that matches mine in terms of power, but that can't be right. He said to himself and narrowed his eyes in the shadows. It matters not for whomever did this will pay dearly. Back with Naruto. Naruto dropped the man onto the ground until he coughed out more blood and fell to his knees, clutching onto the area where his heart is and started to cough violently. Naruto. Kishina cried out and about to leap off the cliff, only to see another red blur appear beside the blonde kneeling down, while he gritted his teeth in pain. Her and everyone's eyes widened when they saw nine fox tails and fox ears on her person and knelt down beside Naruto. Kishina snapped out of her stupor and headed towards their location as did the others. Said blonde was coughing out blood violently while holding his chest in pain. I warned you not to use that technique so soon, Naruto. Your body is not yet ready to fully use it yet, even if you are the new Juubi. Luckily you don't have to worry about shortening your lifespan. She stated while he spat some blood out of his mouth and looked at her weakly. The next time I make a stupid mistake like this, beat some sense into me. He stated and the last thing he saw before he met darkness was his family heading towards them. Two weeks later. The first thing Naruto saw as he opened his eyes was the inside of a white tent. He let out a groan and slowly sat up shaking the drowsiness out of his head and blinked a few times, realizing he was in a recovery room. He looked down to see his shirt was gone, but he still had on his pants. Beside his bed was Hitomi in her kit form curled up. The blonde smiled and reached out and gently pats her on the top of her head. She stirs in her sleep and opens her eyes to see a smiling Naruto. Hey. Was all he said before she morphed into her hybrid form and pulled him into a hug while he let out a grunt but patted her on the back. It's about time you woke up. Your family and friends were getting worried sick. She stated while he brushed his hair back and placed his feet on the floor. How long was I out? Naruto asked Hitomi who sat down on a chair. Two weeks. The ones who were on Yugura's side surrendered after Susanoo absorbed Yugura's beast form and sealed off the rest of his chakra with that. I also explained to your mother and the others how I am free but still bonded to you. She explained. I've got a lot of explaining to do huh? He asked and got a nod from her. Oh well it was bound to happen sooner or later. Where's my gear? He asked Hitomi who pointed to a large scroll and duffel bag that was beside another chair. After he got dressed, he exited out of the tent and before he knew it, he was tackled and glomped by two blurs, Akakari and Yujito Nai. Naruto grunted once again and patted them on the back. Hey ladies. He strained out while they released him, but then got a brain duster to the skull by Yujito. Ow. What was that for? He cried out, clutching his head and glaring at Yujito who glared back. For being a baka. You were out for two whole weeks and had us worried you jerk. She replied in an angry yet worried tone. Your mom and sister have been restless while you were out, so if I were you I'd get to them first. Naruto's eyes widened and looked ashamed for worrying about them like that. Sorry. That was my first time using that when I fought Yugura and I wanted to end the fight as soon as possible. I didn't want to use my transformation because I'd only be causing needless damage and harm to anyone who got caught in the crossfire. He apologized while she huffs up and still glares at him. You may be a Baka, but at least you're a caring Baka. Kerry said with a smile on her face. Now go see your family before I kick your ass. Naruto smirks and gives her a salute and warps away. Kakashi was currently leaning against a tree reading his Itcha Itcha book, and Naruto appeared. Kakashi looked up and saw Naruto. Good to see you awake Naruto. Kishina and Shinku are worried sick over you. He started and Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Yeah I know. Yujito informed me and I already got a brain duster to the head by Yugi-chan. He states while Kakashi chuckles, but afterwards, a serious expression forms on his face. Also Naruto I think you'll need to explain about how you possessed the Sharingan when you fought Igura and why Kaiubi is out of the seal roaming around. He replied and a serious expression formed on Naruto's face as well. I will in due time Nai-san, but for now I just want to see my family. He replied. Kakashi's eyes smiled and nodded at Naruto. And so that you know Naruto, I'm proud of you. Kakashi said while well, Naruto smiled and nodded a thanks before walking towards one of the tents. As he opened the flaps, he saw Shinku sleeping in one of the hammocks peacefully and walked over to her and knelt down. He pushed a strand of hair aside and gave her a kiss on the forehead, just like he did when they were younger. She stirred in her sleep and slowly opened her eyes to see her twin eyes smiling. She rubbed her eyes in order to get a better view of her brother, and her eyes widened. Hey Nikki. 
she asked and Naruto nodded in return. Gears formed around her eyes and the next thing he knew she leapt off the hammock and tackled him, but he managed to keep his footing while she sobbed into his chest, muffling how happy she was to see him up and okay. Naruto smiled and returned the hug. Sorry I worried you like that Shinku-chan. Naruto apologized. Say where's Kasan and the others? He asked as he released her while she wiped the tears from her eyes. That was when he was pulled into a bone-crushing hug by his sobbing mother, and both Anko and Rin joined in, crushing the life out of Naruto who was turning blue. Emina. See can't, beep beep breathe. He stained out to the three sobbing women. Kakashi on the other hand was chuckling while Yuga sweat dropped and looked at her leader. Ano senpai shouldn't we help Naruto cut out before he dies from their hugs? She asked the son of the white fang who shook his head. No, that would be bad for me, Yuga chan Kishina, Anko, and Rin-chan are dangerous when angry. Can you imagine how they'll react if I tried to separate them from Naruto? He asked his former subordinate who pondered on this but paled and shuddered. Good point. She replied. After that little scene, Naruto led them into a secluded sector of the forest. Hey, why did you lead us in the middle of nowhere? Anko asked, and that was when Hitomi appeared before them. Took you long enough Hitomi-chan. Were you trying to hunt for rabbits again? He asked in an annoyed tone which made her rub the back of her head and smile sheepishly. When the others saw Hitomi they got into a fighting stance ready for a fight. Whoa, everyone chills out. No need to make this place into a warzone. Naruto said getting in front of Hitomi. This is the thanks I get for helping out in the war. I'm hurt. She said with a pout on her face while her ears dropped. But Naruto-kun, how do you know she won't turn on us? Rin asked the blonde who sighs. Simple Ni-chan. 1. She can't and won't attack unless I say she can. 2. We are bonded by the seal so I can put her back in the seal if I want to and 3. His eyes closed confusing them for a few seconds, and then here he opened them, revealing the eternal Manjikyu Sharingan and causing everyone to gasp when they saw his eyes. I can use the power of my eyes to stop her from going berserk. Asachi. Your eyes. W what happened to your eyes? Kishina asked Naruto whose expression went from serious to sorrowful. He then went through a few hand signs, and a purple dome surrounded them. There, that way now one can listen into what I'm about to explain nor enter this barrier without getting scorched. He stated. What do you mean Aniki? Shinku asked Naruto. Trust me it's for everyone's safety especially with all the powerful enemies that hate Kanoha, as well as our family Amato. Naruto answered. Now I want each and every one of you to look directly into my eyes. He instructed and they did. The next thing they knew, they were in a world where the sky was blood red as was the moon that had a black outline around it. The ground was black and grey with white outlines, and when the others looked at themselves, they too were black with white outlines. What in the world? Anko asked while looking at her hands and the others. Relaxing Anko-chan Naruto-kun just brought us into his realm. Hitomi stated while Naruto appears in a swirl of fire, but he was in the form he had in his timeline. He wore a pair of cargo pants with styled sandals, a dark green flak jacket, and a version of his father's cape that had the kanji for Rakudame Hokage, Six Fire Shadow, Nidame Kairoi Senkou Second Yellow Flash, and Kami no Sharingan, God of the Copy We Lies, on the back. He looked like an older version of his father, but the difference was the cerulean eyes had slit pupils and canines jutted from his upper lip, which gave him a handsome yet feral appearance. Kakashi's and Rin's eyes bug out when they see this version of Naruto, while Anko, Yugoa, and without realizing it, Kishina and Shinku, were blushing. She's right. The one that I used is an illusion called Tsukiyomi. In this realm I control time, space, as well as the physical mass. I have absolute control over this realm. Naruto stated and with a snap of his fingers, the world changes. The sky was midnight blue with shining stars and a glowing white moon, and they were now in an open field, and they were in their normal color. This is a secondary version of the Tsukiyomi I discovered while training how to use my eternal Manjikyu Sharingan. Interesting, but it doesn't explain how you gained those eyes in the first place, Naruto. Was what you used against Yugura an effect of those eyes? Kakashi asked Naruto who nodded. Yes, that I used was called Susano, the strongest defensive and defensive force that belonged to the Ichiha clan. As for how I gained them. I am not from this timeline. He answered, making their eyes widen. Instead of explaining it, I'll show you. So for the next couple of hours Kashina, Shinku, Rin, Kakashi, Anko, Yugoa, and Hitomi watched the events that occurred in Naruto's life. How Minato and Kashina died sealing Hitomi into him, how the villagers wanted him killed and was treated like dirt since the day he could speak and walk while trying to gain their acknowledgement. They also saw his first mission to wave country, the exams, invasion planned by Rachimaru, retrieving Tsunade and Sasuke when he deserted the village, etc. Afterwards they saw him when he was 16 and returned back to Kanoha after training with Jureya and his family's techniques and learning. 
fighting the Akatsuki until they started the Fourth Shinobi War where the Five Elementals united to fight the organization with Naruto as the Rakudame Hokage and leader of the Allied forces, and the battle where the ninja from each nation fought and died to their last breath. The last thing they saw was Naruto fighting Madara and Sasuke with him gaining the upper hand until the ancient Uchiha pulled a sneak attack. Afterwards, they all saw where they attempted to remove the last from his body with a demonic-looking statue in order to resurrect the Jubi, only for Naruto to create a powerful seal that reversed the technique and absorbed the other eight, as well as Madara and Sasuke, gaining their knowledge, eyes, and powers as well absorbing the Jubi's powers and soul, becoming the new in the process. After watching this they found themselves back in the real world and remained silent for a while. My Kami. All of that actually happened to you? Anko asked and got a nod from Naruto. So Madara Ichiha was the one responsible for everything that happened. Kishina said in a tone full of hatred and anger while clenching her fists. Yes he was pulling everything from the shadows and the reason why the world is in its current state. He believes it is his right to be the ruler of the world and a god amongst men. That cynical arrogant bastard actually thought he had the right to play with others lives but paid the ultimate price and now his power is my power. Naruto answered. So does that mean he's alive in this timeline? Rin asked Naruto and Hitomi growled. Yes he is. Even in his weakened state that accursed used those damn eyes of his to make me go berserk and attack your village. He even managed to cast the Yande Mizukage in a powerful Jinjutsu and control his actions which resulted in the bloodline genocide to happen. That man is evil incarnate and I swear the next time I meet him I'll make his death slow and extremely painful. The nine-tailed vixen snarled out. Naruto placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. All in due time Hitomi-chan. There are others aside from Madara that we have to worry about like Orochimaru and Danzo for example. He started getting grim expressions from the others. The Akatsuki won't be active for a while, which means the snake and the warhawk will be making attempts to destroy Konoha in their own way. They must be taken out of the picture as soon as possible, and then there's the other Jinchuriki that need to be warned. The blonde explained to them. Easier said than done. Anko said. Danzo can easily eliminate any traces that are connected to him or his organization, and Orochimaru hasn't been spotted for a long time. Naruto on the other hand smirks. Oh I already know where Orochimaru is hiding and Danzo. He'll be dealt with soon. That man has been a thorn in my family's side for too long, and I plan on ripping his vile heart out with my bare hands. Naruto said darkly. But what about the other Jinchuriki and Nikki? We already know Yujito and Karabi hold the Nibi and Hachibi, and that Yugura is the holder of the Sanbi, but we don't know where the others are. Shiku asked Naruto who once again grinned. That is why having the knowledge of the eye-stealing team has its strong points. I already know who the vessel of the Hachibi is since he resides in Sunagakur and is the Yandain Kazakiyaja's younger son. The vessel for the Rikubi is traveling around the neutral countries, the Nanabi is residing in Takigakur, and the vessels for the Yanbi and Gopi are in self-exile in Awagakur. He explained getting gobsmacked looks from them all. So what do you intend to do? Yugao asked Naruto who brushed his hair back. Hopefully I can get into contact with them before the Akatsuki can get their locations and capture them, and afterwards I need to deal with Orochimaru, since he and his sound village won't be operational for about a year, and at the very least destroy some of his bases. All in all, I have my hands full. He said and deactivated the barrier and stood up. But for now let's go enjoy the celebration with the rebels and ending this war. He said smiling while they all did the same. And this time I will make sure history doesn't repeat itself. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the other videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.